We are now over halfway through Advent. And so for this weekend, we set aside the penitential color of purple and wear the festive color of rose as a sort of foretaste of the feast that is to come. And the theme of this weekend's readings and of the whole Mass is joy. And joy is something that we all want. We have never met a single person who doesn't want to be happy or joyful. And this deep longing motivates all the actions of our lives, whether we know it or not. It motivates everything that we do. And we don't just want a joy that is fleeting, that comes and goes. We want one that is permanent, that endures through the ups and the downs of life. And when we are unable to find joy, life becomes tedious, and we are frustrated, and we are prone to becoming miserable, and even worse, to despair. And unfortunately, this is so widespread today, this inability to find joy. And I think if we search our hearts and the history of our lives, we can see the effect that joy has upon us and and the good that it is. And I realize this in my own life, as I've said before, when I went to college and I met a group of committed Catholics, and I realized they have something that I don't have, and it was joy. And it wasn't until that moment when I saw their radiant joy that I realized that I didn't have that. And the reason is that joy is the hallmark of the Christian life. It is the birthright of every Christian. It is placed into our souls as a seed at baptism, and it comes to full blossom in the eternal joy of heaven. And why is that? Well, maybe a couple examples might help to explain this. Consider that a person without faith is like a sick man who has an undiagnosed illness. And deep down, he knows something is not right. Something is wrong. But everywhere he turns to find out what is wrong doesn't help him. And since he doesn't find the right diagnosis, he can't find the right remedy. And therefore, he is sad and frustrated. The Catholic Christian, on the other hand, is also a sick man because we have inherited original sin and its consequences. But he, the Christian, has found the perfect doctor, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and he has found the perfect hospital, the Catholic Church, endowed with the medicine for every need. And so the sickness is diagnosed and the remedy is at hand and therefore he rejoices and he has every right to do that. The unbeliever, here's another example, is like a poor man who loses his job and can't pay his mortgage and knows that soon his house and his property will be seized and his family will be out on the street. And so he searches frantically for a friend who will pay his bills but he looks in all the wrong places. And so he is frantic, he is desperate, he has every reason to be sad. But not so with the Catholic Christian because we have made friends with the great king who stoops down to us and not only offers to pay our debts, but opens to us his royal palace and clothes us with royal garments and gives us a place in his kingdom. And therefore, we have every reason to rejoice all the time. As St. Paul says, rejoice always. And you might ask, how can we have joy in the midst of our difficulties? Because every life has so many difficulties. And the reason is this. Joy isn't what happens when life goes perfectly. It's what happens when you know that you are loved perfectly even when life is a mess. Let me repeat that. Joy isn't what happens when life goes perfectly. It is what happens when you know that you are loved perfectly, even when life is a mess. Joy comes from being loved. And that's the message of Christmas, isn't it? Jesus, the divine redeemer, loves us. 
And he entered the world as a little child to show us the tenderness of his love and to show us that we don't have to be afraid of him. But he didn't stop there. He loved us even to the point of the foolishness of the cross and the glory of the resurrection. And this is the basis of our joy, that we are loved. And when we accept this, we are set free from our captivity, our broken hearts are healed, and we are no longer poor in what matters most. So we don't have to change the circumstances of our life to find joy. All we have to do is change ourselves. All we have to do is change ourselves. We heard for our responsorial psalm the Magnificat of Mary, which is a very beautiful testament to the joy that she had from being loved. And in these last days of Advent, we can imagine Our Lady radiant with joy at carrying Jesus in her womb beneath her heart. And she experienced great difficulties in her life, including the, the journey from her home in Nazareth to Bethlehem, which was a long journey. And when she got there, she couldn't find a place for her son. But these problems did not cause her to lose her joy. And so in union with Mary, let us live the joy of being loved by God the Father, who has chosen us and has sent us his Son to be with us always. That's our inheritance. That's the basis of our joy and the gift that God has given to us so that we might live as free persons and know that we are truly loved all the days of our life. And therefore, we have no reason to give up hope and no reason to be discouraged, but always reason to have joy.